RTI Viewer is a software that allows you to view the 2.5D surface created using RTI Builder and manipulate the light direction as well as other settings in order to best find variations in the surface that was recorded during the photography process. There are a number of different rendering modes available, but we will here cover the four that we have found most useful for archaeological work. We will also cover a few other features that are available in this software. To open a PTM, you can either navigate to the PTM file that you created previously and open that, or you can open it using the icon in the top right hand corner of the RTI software, and then select the RTI file that you wish to use. The basis of this software is its ability to rotate an average light based on the positions of the flashes recorded during the RTI photography process. As you may recall, in the previous video there was a sphere showing the distribution of lights collected during the RTI photography process. This is what this software is working from. The green circle in the top right hand corner is representative of the sphere, with the white dot in the middle representing where the average light is placed. To move the light around on the sphere, click the location on the circle the where you want the light to be placed. It is often possible and often easier to drag the light slowly around in the circle. You can also use the middle mouse button on the surface to drag the light around. There are various rendering modes in RTI Viewer which work by applying mathematical enhancement to the surface normals of the PTM you have created. The first rendering mode we will cover is default settings. This mode shows the RTI image without any form of mathematical enhancement. This mode has no parameters other than moving the light direction. This can be useful in examples where you wish to verify something you have seen in other modes based on the colour of a surface, i.e. whether it is a crack or carving. To change the rendering mode, we select the rendering mode drop down box and change it to the one we want. Diffuse gain increases the visualization of sharp changes in height and depth on the recorded surface. This makes it easier to visualize and interpret features with depths on the surface. The gain parameter increases this effect, but also increases the amount of visual artifacts, i.e. the white and black lines that you see here. We typically use this enhancement as a starter step to assess the quality of the RTI before moving into the next visualization method. Specular enhancement allows you to change the specularity of the surface. Specularity is the level of shininess that's found on a surface and determines the size of a highlight. Surfaces with greater specularity, smooth surfaces, have smaller highlights, while surfaces with lower specularity, rougher surfaces, have larger, more dispersed highlights. Using the specularity and highlight size parameter sliders, we can set the highlight size and specularity of the surface material. We typically turn diffuse colour to zero, i.e. we make the surface grayscale, as this makes it easier to evaluate the specular highlights. The specularity slider increases the calculated smoothness of the surface, so naught would show reflect no light, whereas 100 would show it bright. The highlight size determines how big the highlights are, but works in the opposite way from what you would expect. Smaller values give a flatter, more visible surface, and larger values give sharper highlights. There is not a set rule for what to have here, but generally 80% specularity and 30-40% to highlight size works pretty well. The normals visualization enhancement creates an RGB image based on the direction of the surface normals, the values calculated on the direction of the surface and assigns them a colour value based on the following colour sphere. This means that surfaces facing to the left are coloured green, while surfaces that face to the right are coloured red. This is useful to get a good representation of the directionality of the captured surface. There are no parameters that can be changed for this enhancement. If you want to zoom in on a section of the surface, you can use the scroll wheel on the mouse to zoom in and out. If you do not have a middle mouse button, you can use the zoom field in the top right hand corner. To move about when you are zoomed in, you can left click and drag to pan around the surface.
When you've found a good light direction and zoom level for an area that you want to document, you can keep a bookmark to save its location and settings. To do this, in the bottom right hand corner, click on the bookmarks tab. Then click add. In the menu that comes up, add a decent name and press OK. You will then be able to quickly navigate to the location and settings you chose by selecting the bookmark from the drop down box above. If you decide your settings are not quite right, you can change them and then click update bookmark. If you want to further highlight a specific area within the bookmark, with the bookmark you wish to highlight selected, you can click add in the highlight box and then draw a rectangle. You can edit this by clicking edit and then dragging on the corners of the box or you can delete it by pressing delete and then clicking the box. To delete a bookmark, with the bookmark selected in the drop down box, click delete. To export images from the software for publication, all you need to do is have the area that you're interested in focusing on on the screen, with the rendering mode and lighting set as you want it. You'll then click the snapshot box in the top right hand corner, and in the option box that comes up, you'll save your file. Remember to select which type of file you want to save as, either JPEG or PNG. In this video, we have discussed what RTI Viewer is for, the basics of how to use it, and the most common rendering methods within archaeology. We have covered opening files, how to use the lighting sphere to change the direction of the light on the surface, how to use the default, diffuse gain, specular enhancement, and normal visualization rendering modes, and how to zoom, create bookmarks, and export publication-ready snapshots from the software.